Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Beth and I'm very excited to film today's video because I have in my hands here uh, the new Dior Forever Glow Star Filter. Uh, I have it in the shade Zero and I also picked up their Forever Glow Maximizer in the shade Pearly. Uh, so I'm going to demo and talk about these products in this video. Uh, but yeah, this product in particular has gotten a lot of attention because, as we all know, Charlotte Tilbury introduced the Flawless Filter. I've talked a lot about quote-unquote Charlotte Tilbury dupes in other videos. And Dior isn't a dupe, obviously. It's even a higher price point. So it becomes really interesting when other high-end and luxury brands, uh, like, I'd say Tarte is more a mid-range brand, but like Tarte and... Or Mercier are making products similar to Charlotte Tilbury where it's not like you're getting a deal so it's not like a, a low-cost dupe kind of thing it's just an alternative so there might be a slight difference in formula or shades available or packaging uh, but I think really what it comes down to is just we really have to hand it to Charlotte Tilbury for being kind of an industry leader in developing products I know a lot of people look at her shade range specifically and a lot of it is pillow talk, that kind of very glam, neutral type look. Not very colorful or anything like that. Uh, but she is, I think, such a huge figure in the beauty industry in terms of developing products. And so I think we just have to look at her as being kind of this trailblazer. And now even more established, higher end brands are kind of following in her footsteps. So... Very interesting. So I thought what I would do is apply this product on one half of my face and apply the Hollywood Flawless Filter on the other. And then I think I'll just apply the Dior product on half underneath my makeup and then I'll go from there. So uh, you can kind of see, I guess, the head-to-head -head comparison between the Charlotte Tilbury and the Dior. And then you can also see the effect that this product gives to the skin. So generally how I use this product is kind of as an all-over under foundation base. Uh, I can also do a little bit on top. I don't usually mix it in with my foundation directly. So um, I'll show you what it looks like just by itself on top. Uh, but of course I have this guy to uh, kind of do on top as more of a highlighter um, type product. So that is kind of what I have in mind. Uh, I have picked up quite a bit of Dior cosmetics lately and I did pull out uh, everything that I thought I could use in this video. Uh, and I have ordered most of the newer products directly from Dior. Uh, these products just launched yesterday and I paid for overnight shipping and it did get here overnight. So it's always really impressive um, ordering from Dior. But um, of course you get the gorgeous gift packaging. I did upload a little reel of the unboxing of these products uh, along with some comparison swatches. Uh, next to some other products. So I'll provide a link to that. I guess it's a short on YouTube, but anyway. Uh, so from the first order, this was before the new products launched, uh, but I think I was into Dior for a second because there's a new Apple TV show called The New Look. Uh, I even ordered his autobiography from Amazon, which I haven't gotten very far into, but yeah, really interesting that that kind of exists. As you may know, Dior's life was relatively short, so uh, he, I think, wrote that book almost at the end of his life. Uh, not that he knew. Anyway. So uh, they had a really nice gift with purchase, and I decided to take advantage of that. Uh, so I ordered their Dior Backstage Glow Face Palette. I won't be using this today because it's an established product, and I want to try out the new one. Uh, but this is, I guess, a reformulation of this kind of quad format. Uh, and I had really enjoyed using this palette. Uh, this new one is the 001 Universal. And this was the 004, upside down, Rose Gold. So this was kind of a limited edition holiday palette in the U.S. I think it might still be available in Asia from what I understand. I don't know if they'll bring it back. Uh, you can see, like... All of the new Dior kind of reformulations, they're changing their packaging uh, to be the all capitals. So anyway, I kind of wanted to have that type of uh, formula in my life again, so I picked that up. As I think a lot of people may sympathize, uh, it is annoying that they are kind of reformulating everything because I do have 
uh, their highlighters. I uploaded a video when these first launched not too long ago. Uh, and from what I can tell, the colors look similar, but I don't know if the formulas have changed at all. Uh, I did compare some of these as well, so I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, I did pick up the new eyeshadow palette in Soft Cashmere. Uh, from what I understand, this palette, the newer formulation, is not as good as the original, but I still kind of wanted to, I guess, give this color story a shot so um, I'll use that I have a blush from them concealer and I did pick up a lot of their new lipsticks uh, so these I actually got from Ulta uh, but I got the same 999 shade in their satin velvet and their forever Dior formula uh, yeah so I picked up all of those and I also got their lip pencil in the new 999 shade uh, and then I got as a sample the 100 nude look in velvet uh, what I might do actually is uh, because I also picked up this was some content I had on my Instagram um, as well I picked up the new and old formulations of Mac uh, Ruby Woo uh, and I also have a new and old version of one of the Clinique lipsticks. So I think I'm going to do that as a dedicated video, just kind of comparing old and new lipstick formulations. So I think, I think that is what I will end up doing for that. Uh, but yeah, this one, I got another little mini sample. This is an Icon. It's a satin. And then they also have such cute little pouches. And it's also fun ordering from Dior because you get great samples. Uh, so I got two of their perfume samples, and these are the ones that you don't generally see pop up on like Sephora or that kind of thing. And then this is, I think, what I was really excited about. Uh, again, this is more of their their higher end perfume line. I forget what it's called, but uh, this is Gris Dior. I think Jenna Ortega is the model or whatever they're called for... Uh, that perfume and then they also have the new look and I gather that um, Francis Kirkstegen uh, is the Perfumer behind this as well. So yeah, I did want to kind of get that because of the new TV show and all that But to be honest, I'm a little <laughs> disappointed in the TV show. Let me know if anyone else has watched it It's more of a World War II World War II TV show as opposed to one really about Dior and his fashion. It's more its more about his sister, really. Which is a great story to tell. It's just not really how it was marketed. So anyway, let's talk about the makeup. So uh, the Forever Glow Star Filter, they call it a liquid highlighting concentrate. It says this complexion enhancer visibly brightens, smooths, and blurs the skin for a complexion that's more radiant than ever. The skincare makeup hybrid formula delivers 24 hours of hydration it is multi-use and can be worn three ways, uh, as we've discussed. And they say, uh, the shade range of neutral tones work in perfect harmony with the shades of Dior Forever Skin Glow Foundation. A single pump delivers just the right amount of product to brighten the entire face. Okay, so that's good to know. So I do have a sample of the Dior Forever Skin Glow. Uh, I haven't tried it though, and I don't think, and I think one end neutral might still be too deep for me. I thought about picking it up, but I didn't want to introduce too many variables at once because then I couldn't get a good read on uh, this new product. But if anyone has tried that and they enjoy it, uh, let me know. Uh, and if we're shade twins, let me know what shade you wear. Okay, so this product, $55, it has 10 shades and I got the shade zero. Uh, one thing about the Dior website, I wish they had shade descriptions. Uh, you know how some websites like Sephora, they'll say this is like pale beige with some kind of shimmer or whatever. Uh, Dior doesn't do that, so it makes it a little bit more challenging. Uh, and just for comparison, the Charlotte Tilbury, let's see, the Dior, how much product do you get? You do get one fluid ounce, 30 mil or one fluid ounce. Uh, so the Charlotte Tilbury has 12 shades, uh, retails for $49, so slightly cheaper, and you also get one ounce or 30 milliliters. Uh, and just for comparison, I also swatched these next to those two. Uh, but as we know, the e.l.f. is kind of a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury. Not kind of, it 
well, it tries to be anyway. Uh, $14 for 1.06 fluid ounce or 31.5 milliliters. I'm not sure why you get just a little bit more product. Uh, and I swatched the shades 0.5 Fair and 1 Fair. Uh, the Charlotte Tilbury and the Elf both have the, the doe foot mechanism, uh, which may or may not be your preference. Uh, so personally, I like the Dior because it actually has a pump. Uh, so this silver cap, I know it already has fingerprints on it, but uh, the silver cap comes off. You also have the little Dior monogram on the top, which is a nice touch. So it's nice for hygiene reasons. Uh, you may prefer the ease of having a doe foot. Um, but the other product I compared it to is the Auric Glow Lust in Morganite. And this is $46.50, so the least expensive of the high-end options. And you also get a little bit more product, 1.18 fluid ounce or 35 mil. This one also has a pump, um, nice luxe, glass packaging and everything like that. I think the Auric might have travel sizes of all of their shades. I know Charlotte Tilbury has travel sizes of some of their shades. So maybe worth looking into if you want if you want that option. So that that's really it. So I think I'm going to do I'll do the Charlotte Tilbury on my left side and in all honesty this particular product it's getting a little long in the tooth, so hopefully hopefully we do okay here. Uh, and this is in the shade 1, fair, if I didn't mention that. So I'm just going to spread that out. I have a feeling it's going to be a little bit easier to control the amount of product you dispense with the Charlotte Tilbury. Uh, and I have already done my skincare, so I do have some kind of natural radiance just based on like the hydration level of my skin. Uh, it's been at least, I want to say like 20 minutes or so. Okay, so I'm going to dispense, that's one pump, and it doesn't actually look like a lot of product. When I swatch all these products next to each other, I kind of tried to swash them. So I'm basically, I feel like I'm using the amount they say to use on your entire face on half my face. Uh, but yeah, when I swatch them next to each other, I kind of, I try to swatch them from lightest to deepest. And it looked like the two e.l.f. shades are the deepest. I did wear one of them in a video recently uh, so you can kind of see that application and finished look. Uh, so yeah, those those look the deepest. The uh, Auric looked the lightest. And the Auric also looked a touch more metallic than the rest of them. Yeah, and the Dior was a little bit, I think, lighter than the Charlotte Tilbury. So... I feel like I'm getting more kind of bounce back on the Dior side. Like it has a little bit more of a kind of metallic reflect to it than the Charlotte Tilbury. I feel like the Dior is also just doing a little bit more to kind of reduce the appearance of redness. I don't know if, I mean, if you do like the Charlotte Tilbury, even if you have oily skin, you might like the Dior but I'm not sure it's going to be kind of the most ideal product. Uh, and that's how my hand looks with what was left of the Dior kind of blended out. So hopefully that gives you a good idea. As far as like blurring, I don't, I don't think it really does much blurring. I think it's hard for a product with a lot of reflect to blur. So yeah, that's, that's interesting. Okay, so let me find my makeup eraser. Yeah, I thought it was interesting that they specifically recommended using the, the glow filter 
with the Dior Glow foundation. I guess if you just want to go all out with the glow, ideally you would be able to use it with different foundations to kind of change, change the finish. All right, so I'm just gonna leave that side bare. Uh, so that was, did I do the right face? Okay, so I'm not 100% positive uh, and I don't feel like watching the footage back. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove all of this. And this is just a damp makeup eraser. I think it's doing a good enough job just to remove kind of what was on my face. All right, so I kind of want just like a base level of moisturizer because I just kind of removed whatever skincare I had. So I'm going to try this little Glossier Priming Moisturizer. I got it as a sample. Yeah, I think I think that's gonna be a good a good amount of hydration. I don't wanna go in with something kind of too dewy and luminous. I just wanna kind of, I don't know, start back at kind of ground zero. And I do have dry skin and it is mid-February. I also got this, uh, the Dior nail polish in the shade 999, which is their like classic red color. I tell you, I went on a, a deep dive looking into uh, like makeup history and everything like that. A luxury polish should be relatively flawless, but I was actually kind of impressed. I think this was also a like reformulation uh, of their polish, but uh, the cap of these comes off by the way. So if you prefer just to use this type of cap to apply, uh, but it does have the nice wide brush that I like. And I just applied this earlier today, so I can't really speak to wear or anything yet. Uh, I'll let you know how long lived it is. But in general, I mean, it was, it was pretty nice and easy to apply. So nice base coat, two coats, and then top coat, and I was good to go. Okay, so uh, again, I'm going to use the Dior One Pump which again, they say is enough for your full face. I don't know if I believe that. And I'm going to apply it on my right side, which may be the left side as you're looking into the camera. Try to use like little kind of memory techniques, but <laughs> Charlotte has an L and an R, so didn't trust myself. And they say you can just apply this with your fingers or their foundation brush. I think it does have a slight floral scent. I mean, nothing like too objectionable. Okay. So that is the Dior apply. That might have been the same side it was before. But you know, things are in the reverse. Okay. So I'm just going to leave it there and just taking a quick glance they have like some floral extracts that they say have skincare benefits i don't really know if i believe that or not but anyway uh so i'm going to use my charlotte tilbury corrector to start with i feel like those two products together do do a lot actually. All right, and then this on the other side. Uh, so I dampened my beauty blender and uh, I'm going to use the Makeup Forever HD Skin. I just did a comparison between this, this is the classic one and uh, the new Hydro Glow. I want to go with the more like natural matte finish because I want you to be able to see what is the Dior filter and what is the foundation. Uh, so I did do a comparison between this product and the new one, if you haven't seen that. Uh, but I'm just going to kind of start off, try and get kind of even coverage here and using the same sponge on both sides. Yeah, I wanted to use this foundation because it is, like I said, more of the kind of natural matte and also because it's fairly popular and it's been out for a while, so I figured it was kind of a good, a good baseline. Just pouncing that. Hopefully I'm not kind of transferring any of the underlying product between the two sides, but. Okay, so that is how we're looking. And I think once we kind of get to the final stages, maybe 
and we'll have a better idea. Okay, so uh, I think I'll go ahead and do brows. So I will use this e.l.f. Wow Brow product. I like to kind of use a mix of like luxury high-end and drugstore. Like if the drugstore is doing something good, I don't see a reason not to use it. And there are certain products like I guess a brow gel where there really isn't a huge like packaging difference, such that I feel like I'm missing out on kind of the experience. All right, so I'm just going to set those a little bit more with the Anastasia brow gel. Uh, I have a travel size of the new one somewhere, but I don't have it in front of me. All right, so for concealer, so I did bring out my Dior Forever Skin Correct in the shade 00, which I think is the lightest shade they offer. And I tried their, I guess, older formulation in a couple shades and I didn't find that it was light enough. This is perhaps almost too light. Uh, but I know Michelle Wong always really liked, I think the original formulation especially and uh, talked about it. Um, so when they came out with the newer formulation with I think another shade that was maybe a little bit better for me. I went ahead and picked it up. I do have the Dior Backstage Powder, but since that is, I guess, discontinued, they haven't brought out a replacement. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that. It seemed like that was a pretty, pretty popular product. Okay, and so I'll just do some quick contouring. I don't actually care for the Charlotte Tilbury contouring wand all that much. Uh, I do enjoy a good liquid contour though. So I'm going to use the e.l.f. Halo Glow. <laughs> Trying to, I guess, show some love to all of these brands. Do you guys see e.l.f.'s uh, Super Bowl commercial? I actually did pick up some of the merch <laughs> they released. So it's like an e.l.f. we trust. The lawyer in me kind of got a kick out of it and I feel a little bit I don't know, ahead of the curve because I did watch Suits, I think when it was still airing maybe back in the day before Meghan Markle was anyone. If you do watch Suits, let me know who your favorite uh, Suits character is. I always liked Donna, of course. And, um, oh gosh, what's his name? The really annoying one. <laughs> it's really funny. And I was, I liked his, uh, his love story arc. The woman who was like a, uh, admissions counselor at Harvard. So, all right. So still no powder or anything. That's how we're looking. All right. So I think I will go ahead and powder and Charlotte Tilbury has always had one of my favorite powders. This is her airbrush flawless finish. Uh, I am trying to use this up and this is at least the second one of these that I've had, possibly the third. And I have a backup ready to go. Uh, this was her older packaging, so it's not refillable. All right, so that's just under the eyes. Uh, so I will go ahead and set kind of, I guess, lightly, see what that does. I feel like I have to kind of work a bit because <laughs> there's not much actual product left. Okay, so I think I think that leaves us in a good spot for now, except possibly blend a little bit better right there. So for bronzer, I do have the Charlotte Tilbury powder bronzers, but they're not, not my favorite. Uh, I'm just going to use the Gucci one because it's not too luminous. I think I will pick up her Charlotte Tilbury's cream bronzer eventually. It's kind of been on my list to try. Maybe now that she's uh, sold at Ulta. It occurred to me that we might be seeing some Charlotte Tilbury like samples in Ulta gifts with purchase, which is kind of exciting. Okay, am I roughly even? Uh, and I have been wearing, by the way, uh, the Dior lip oil. Uh, I think the e.l.f. ones that are supposed to dupe this, I think they have menthol. 
or some kind of peppermint minty kind of um, product. I like this. I think it's more just about interacting with it, like having it out in your bag versus like the actual quality of the lip oil. Uh, I'm almost done, um, as you can see. This is like just a random one from Cab. I think that might be a Housewives brand. But anyway, I've almost used this completely up. It's usually what I reach for when I'm doing my YouTube videos and I just need to throw something on. So yeah, for home and everything, that one I like a lot actually. Um, but yeah, this one is a little cuter. Okay, so I'm gonna use a bit of the Rosewood blush, the Dior Rosy Glow. I do have one of their like non-backstage blushes. I think these, at least recently, have always been kind of more popular anyway. Uh, but they reformulated those blushes as well. Uh, this is the newer formulation of um, the backstage blushes. And I think that was a shade expansion as well. Um, this was the older, older blush. So trying to use products that are currently available, unless for some reason I'm explicitly comparing them. Okay, so let's see what happens. So now that I've powdered and done all of that, uh, I just want to see what happens if I just take a tiny bit. Uh, I feel like this pump is fairly easy to control and it doesn't feel like you're pumping out like way too much product every time you use it. I guess that's good that you can kind of control. So just going to start. So that's kind of the effect. Nice subtle highlight. I'm not mad at that. And I think everything kind of blended in pretty well. Oops, unless I tap more on and don't blend it. Um, Yeah, so, uh, yeah, not mad at that. Of course, it's not going to be the most beaming highlighter out there. Uh, what should we do? I'm just going to leave it uneven, I think. Uh, and for the other product that is new, uh, they keep saying it has limited availability. I don't know if that just means that they have like a limited kind of production run of it and that they will restock or what, but it says limited, so. Uh, this, they say, is a liquid highlighter, long wear, intense, luminous glow, multi-use. Suitable for different skin tones, the shades of Dior Forever Glow Maximizer come in a range of intensities for a custom effect. Highlighter, a quote-unquote blush-like glow or a luminous bronzer, applied in touches on the face or eyelids. Uh, and this retails for $45, comes in six shades, and this is the shade Pearly. So you get in this guy, 11 mil, which is just, this is going to be a smaller size of the Spotlight Beauty Light Wand, but uh, the full size of this, you get 12 milliliters and it is 42. So a little bit more products for a little bit less money. I don't know if like the sponge tip of these though, if you end up kind of consuming more product that way. Uh, but to me, this is kind of the comparison product. I don't know that, I mean, Dior didn't use like a poof or anything, so. And I don't think these colors are going to be remotely similar. That is Spotlight. And this pearly shade is actually, has a very interesting doe foot like that. Kind of, I don't know if it's meant so that you can just kind of add a dot. Kind of thing. This white shade, when I blended it out and when I first applied it to my arm, it has, I think, a good amount of glitter in it, if you can see that. And I think it also, it might lean a little bit towards the, like, the blue reflect that we had in, uh, and keep in mind, this is the older formula, so I don't know if the new one is different, but uh, the white highlighter in this guy uh, this was in the real, but I'll just go ahead and compare it. So you can see this one also had a lot of that glitter to it. So very, very similar. I get that in focus. Um, very similar. So if you did, I don't know, like the shade a lot, but you just wished it were kind of in a liquid form, uh, you might you might be in luck because they do look awfully similar. 
Uh, so if you don't like the highlighter in the powder form for the shade or the glitteriness of it all, then I would say probably want to stay clear of this one. I don't know if, uh, like I also picked up the pink glow shade. Uh, and this is what I featured in that last uh, Dior highlighter video. This one is much more of that kind of satiny kind of quality to it rather than the kind of more glittery. Uh, and to be, to be fair, the Dior highlighter in the pearl shade, the white one, uh, this guy right here, picked this one up in London a while ago. This is kind of obnoxiously large. Um, and this one is supposed to be limited. Um, let's see, try and get a good swatch without kind of ruining the embossing. That one is still pretty glittery. It looks like it might be a tad finer though. Not quite as blue. You can see compared to the Dior, it's a little bit more leaning yellow. Yeah, it's interesting that these luxury brands making a white highlighter. I'm, I'm interested in white highlighters as a general matter because um, I'm so fair that sometimes I need to go with a white just so it's actually lighter than my skin tone. All right, so I'm gonna try and like take off as much of that as I can. And this is the non like highlighted, highlighted side and I kind of felt as soon as I swatched this that it was maybe not going to be my favorite, but I mean, it, it does blend in, I guess, but still, still a little bit kind of on the glittery side. But because I only picked up this one shade, I am curious if the other shades are going to be different. And again, I do wish that Dior had kind of shade descriptions because then you might be able to tell a little bit easier. Uh, let's see, I just wanna see how they recommend applying. Yeah, they say blend with your finger. So that is definitely a difference, right? And I'll just try and get as close as I can. Yeah, I think you can like see visible. I think this was a brush hair. Uh, see visible sparkle. So yeah, I think, especially where highlighting is now, I, I kind of prefer the star filter a little bit more, even on top. Um, and for more of a kind of intense highlight in a liquid form, I would recommend the Charlotte Tilbury. Uh, for like a baked gelée formula, the new Anastasia highlighter is actually really nice um, for my skin tone, if you're similar to me. Uh, that one is limited edition though. The Year of the Dragon one, and uh, I did film a look with it, which may be going up after this video. Uh, so just keep your eyes tuned for that if you're interested. Um, that product, though, again, is limited edition, so if you want it, uh, you might want to go for it sooner rather than later. Uh, so I think in the interest of time, uh, I have my eyes to do in the lips, so I think I'm just going to quickly do uh, my eyeshadow and everything and just do kind of a, a speed through of that. So uh, I'll have all of the products I use uh, down below.
right, so that is the look. I did my eyes and I applied the many of the uh, lipstick that I have in the shade, it's way too small on this little thing. Whatever this shade is, I'll link it down below. But uh, yeah, this is a satin formula icon, maybe. Uh, so maybe not the ideal shade for the eyes, but it's what I had. And again, I'll do a different video where uh, I have some samples of Nude Look and 999. So I'll do a little bit of a comparison between the old and the new formulas in those shades. Uh, but yeah, I was actually really impressed with this eyeshadow quad or quint, I guess. Uh, so this is kind of a cult favorite, I guess. Uh, but I had heard a lot of people say that they didn't like the newer formula. I don't have the older formula to compare it to, but I, I thought it was really pretty and easy to work with. Uh, I do have in this formula, or the older formula, I should say, uh, the new dress is what I have. I did kind of like the older mechanism because you would push this bar to open it. I uh, still don't like the little applicators, but it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, this one, it's a little bit, I think, more difficult to open because you kind of have to get a grip on the, the monogram there to open. I don't know if the older version had a tendency to break or if it was more expensive to manufacture, but yeah, really, really impressed with this. I had tempered my expectations, I guess I should say. Uh, in fact, it did remind me quite a bit of one of my favorite palettes from Lisa Eldridge, the uh, Vega palette. I don't know if people have explicitly compared these two. I wouldn't be surprised if they did. I like Lisa's packaging a little bit better, but yeah, kind of similar effect, especially if you take away like that middle gray shade in the black and just kind of focus on the more taupey tones. Uh, I feel like you get a similar look. So yeah, I think out of everything I tried that was new, I really, I really enjoy this. So I'll look forward to using it again. So another thing I noticed that was interesting, uh, I took about, I don't know, 20, 30 minute break in between finishing my eyes and starting this uh, section of the video. Uh, the, the foundation is actually creasing a little bit in my smile lines on this side. And I have to keep reminding myself which side is the uh, Dior Star Filter. I think it was this side, right? I'm pretty sure. Uh, so you can see, I think, obviously there's some reflect up at the top of the cheeks from the, like, second application. Uh, but I think, like, if you compare it to kind of the bottom part of my cheek on this side versus this side, I think you definitely get a nice kind of subtle, subtle radiance. Uh, but yeah, if anything, I would have thought that the side that had maybe the more luminous base would have creased, but I don't know if it was the Glossier or if it was just my face on that side, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it's also, I think it also looks a little bit like drier and maybe more textured in through here. The forehead, I don't think looks too different. So yeah, if you were interested in either of these new products and wanted to pick one up, I would recommend the Star Filter over this guy, at least in this shade. I don't know if the other shades are different, but yeah, it's just a little bit too glittery, I think, for my taste. Uh, but this is nice, and if you wanted, I guess, a high-end kind of luxury product like this, uh, and you like Dior, then uh, I would say, you know, it's not a bad product. Whether it's better than the other ones that I mentioned is, you know, difficult to say. I think certainly if you want the drugstore option, you're going to go for e.l.f., which I've worn before and it worked for me. And of course we have the OG here, Charlotte Silbury. Both of those do have the doe foot though, so you may prefer the pump. Uh, I would say though, if you, if you want a pump and you want perhaps, I don't know, a more luxurious experience or whatever, I would suggest at least taking a look at the Auric. I think it is a little bit more metallic and finish. The good thing about this is that you can get a travel size uh, for about, I want to say it was like $28 or something. Uh, and they are sold at Beautylish now. So I don't know, maybe consider checking that out the next time you place an order with Beautylish. Uh, otherwise, like if you are a fan of Dior makeup, I think, I think it's good. So not a must have, not a rush out and buy, but 
yeah, I would, I would give a thumbs up to this, not to this. And I try to give you my thoughts on the other Dior products as we went along. So I hope you guys found this video interesting or helpful. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. And until next time, I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.